shadow light for hello my name is flammer i am dampier half living half dead the dark side of my heritage serving only one purpose my dark nature allows me to annihilate in godfire the evil undead completely and utterly at the portcullis gate leading into the arched tunnel carved through 20 feet of narrow mountainside i await our new ally the elephaman wearing the illusion of toreg's human appearance from the water well beside the gate i spy on the elephaman mustag and the twins i watch in fascination as the elephaman opens the massive iron gate without tremendous strain i had been ready to assist him once the elephaman allows the portcullis's spikes to plunge into the earth again behind him i swiftly move out from behind the concealment of the water well still cloaked in magical invisibility my physical form materializes as i chant the spell needed to manifest the ghostly outline of a gigantic hand the building sized mist like gray hand glides forward as an extension of my will and lifts the portcullis smoothly i greet the surprised elephaman and thomas my wizard ally from another world with a vocal hello to thomas i send out a second telepathic greeting regan the elephaman whom thomas had spoken highly of stared in confusion at my appearance and the appearance of my companion i and agnes human golem both barely stand over five feet tall blood red long-sleeved wizard robes covered almost every inch of my frame a wide-brimmed hat of dark crimson adorns my head this is agnes's golem i tell regan pointing my hand at the diminutive human girl standing beside me she holds a short bow and quiver of arrows casually slung across one shoulder Agnes dressed her golem in tight brown shirt and loose green trousers. The golem's acorn-colored eyes stare at your face eerily, unblinkingly at Vagan, appearing to make him uncomfortable as he shifted from one foot to the other repeatedly. Vagan reached out when he realized I had yet to retract my open hand in greeting. I match his powerful handshake's grip with iron dampier strength. The elephaman I knew to wear an illusion of humanity cannot mask a wide-eyed look of astonishment. I offer him an apologetic look for my forceful grip. Then I proceed to tell the other world being, when you are inside border town, you cannot reveal that you are an elephaman. The citizens think you are our hero, Toreg, since you now wear his illusion. I speak now with urgency, saying, your spear, Thomas, friend to us both, has the power to slay demons, as Thomas must have already explained to you. You must make a bond with Thomas on this world in loyalty, a show of your pure heart, or you must bond with another. Only those who love another more than themselves can wield the power to slay demons within Thomas's goodly spear tip. Now please bow your head, my Elephaman brother. I wish you to share with you Toreg's final moments before Mobius struck him down months ago. I chant in the sometimes guttural language I must recite to activate my magical spells associated with illusions and other forms of mind manipulation. Having trained in magical semantics for tens of thousands of hours, I utter each harsh syllable of my spell with perfection. I fill Vagan's mind with the image of Mobius. The demonic monster possesses the upper body of a long-haired man with saber-toothed fangs. The half-man's long, corded arms end in gigantic orange lobster-clawed hands. Mobius's lower body appeared like an eight-legged spider the height of a pony, though much wider. A terrifying long and animated snake-like tail the width of a man's leg ended in a scorpion's poisonous sack and a knife-like piercer the size of a man's forearm. Mobius's scorpion tail draws closer to Toreg's back as the demon slowly scampers forward on eight spider-like legs. Toreg, however, does not notice Mobius behind him. The rose flower in Toreg's hand distracts him. I decide to tear Wagen free from reliving Toreg's last moments, free from witnessing the scorpion tail plunge into his back. The same cowardly method Mobius had used in ambushing most of the soldiers of Border Town already. As I watch Wagen's eyes blink, adjusting to the shapes and sounds of his new reality once more. I explained to him, the flower Toreg held had been a chaos orb wearing the illusion of a flower. That distraction had costed him his dampier life. We believe most of the Greyhawks are the undead bodies of our young town soldiers. We also strongly suspect that the undead council members located the lifeless soldiers and decided to salvage their remains to increase their influence over border town. If that is true, they altered the facial appearance of the soldiers with their magic before animating their bodies as zombie golems, their bodies half-earthen then.